guys welcome back to Aram Orchids and More today it's me Tristan and we're gonna be talking a little bit about repotting ceratopodiums so one of our viewers on one of our previous video uh, Trish Bronk I believe the name was uh, recommended a, a repotting video of ceratopodiums and or colloquially known as cigar orchids uh, and we're still gonna do a whole bunch of other repotting videos but we've been trying to put it off even though a lot of you have requested it uh, we're putting it off for the same reason that a lot of y'all should probably be putting it off um, because we're still not all the way into spring yet. It's still kind of the dead of winter. We're past the solstice and the days are getting longer and so plants are starting to wake up a little bit uh, but we are still in all intents and purposes still here in uh, you know, a more inactive season and winter is not a great repotting season uh, but that being said um, we're going to oblige you on repotting a few certipodiums because uh, what I got here today is something very similar to what um, the person who requested was looking for. So these are some Certipodium uh, hybrids here. And they kind of went dormant this year, but also kind of did not. Uh, most likely due to how much rain we've gotten here this winter. So usually by now you would have lost all of your leaves. And uh, uh, they'll be re putting up new roots anytime uh, here in the next month or so because um, certipodiums tend to wake up in February um, or you know sometime in the early spring and so we can go ahead and repot them even though it wouldn't hurt to wait a little bit longer I'm not going to be disturbing the roots on these plants uh, too much uh, so I think we'll be able to get by with it and these are about the size they're going to need to be repotted this year anyhow so we might as well do it and I would like to say these are certipodiums that came from where I work, the nursery I work at. Um, and I had to get a couple of these for the video because I'm not perfect and I'd like to show you all that. Uh, I have some that I was growing at, at our house here from the exact same seed batch. So the genetics were the same, uh, but I was not a very good orchid steward this year. And I had them um, probably a little under fertilized and you can see I lost a lot of them and some of them probably don't look all that great. Uh, these ones are not big enough. Uh, compared to the ones that I'm going to be repotting today, you can see the difference in size here. Put that next to you, you can see the difference in size. So I did not take good care of my Certipodium seedlings at the house this year. And for that, you know, I've only got just a little bit of extra growth. Um, so what are you going to do? All I can do is try and fertilize a little bit better this year. So that being said, we're going to go ahead and like I said, this is about the size that you would want to repot your seedlings. So if you're starting off from um, Certipodium flask or seedlings, this is going to be about the size that you would want to step up to maybe a four or five inch. So unlike most orchids that you would want to put into a pot that's just slightly bigger, bigger than the previous container, I've noticed that Certipodiums are uh, really negatively affected by uh, drying out too much during their growing season. And so if you do like here I had a couple that were in this is ones that I had at the house here and they were in these little two inch pots and a lot of them did not get enough water and fertilizer I don't think there was enough media there to keep them growing when they should have been and so I like to repot my certipodiums into a, a fairly large pot uh, most orchid people would look at it and say that's way over potted and if it was a cattleya or anything else I would absolutely agree but certipodiums are a little bit different so here you go. This is the size of pot that I'm planning on putting these in. Uh, I would like it to be known that I actually would recommend clay, but I didn't have any terracotta pots that were either clean or the appropriate size right now to put these in. So we're gonna get, we're gonna work with what we got. And since there's still a, a seedling, um, being a little bit more wet in a, uh, a plastic pot is probably not gonna be too problematic. So that's about the size that we're gonna wanna put them in. And you can see, I mean, it is consider, considerably larger in volume than the containers that they're growing in now. Um, and let's talk about mix next. So what do we want to do for mix? So I think all certipodiums, including the epiphytic ones like our native punctatum, I think uh, they're all just confused terrestrials, the epiphytic ones. And I've grown most of my certipodiums in more of a terrestrial style mix. I'm not saying it needs to be a mud mix, uh, not like, don't just get a bag of potting soil and throw them in there, uh, but a large open 
bark or media like uh, a charcoal and bark mix, it tends to be not wet enough during the growing season to keep them happy. So what I like to do is I like to add a lot of organic material. Uh, you can either use sphagnum peat moss mixed with like 50-50 ratio of that and bark. Uh, lots of perlite. I tend to make up my mixes for my surd podiums as I go, so it's never the same each go around. I just kind of add what I have on hand. But generally I like to add perlite, uh, peat, something organic, sand. Uh, general purpose sand works pretty good if it's clean sand. Um, today what I'm going to be going with is something that they're already growing in just to keep them keep them in the similar media. So these ones from the nursery we have in, man, I'm having a hard time getting it out of there, um, shredded tree fern. Shredded tree fern, I've talked about it on other videos, but I like it a lot. It comes in bags like this. It's called fernwood. They're making smaller bags, but I use a lot of it so I get the bigger bags. Um, but what I was saying is I like to mix it. So this is a very fibrous, spongy, moisture retentive medium. But what I had was a little bit of old um, standard bark, um, like a Catlia mix that's got uh, Orchiata, charcoal, sponge rock, and hydroton. A little bit of excess of that. So what I'm going to try and do, you know, it's not an exact science, but I'm going to try and just mix 50-50 uh, tree fern and this together. Maybe a little bit heavier on the tree fern than the bark. So maybe like a 30-70 a mix of bark and tree fern. And like I said, you can use, if you have really good quality sphagnum peat moss, that works really well. Or you can even use sphagnum moss. I've grown um, certipodiums and sphagnum moss. I tend to only like sphagnum moss for smaller seedlings. Once they get to be too big, I, I, I think it's a little bit too moisture retentive. Um, but that's just my opinion. And a lot of this, in all of our videos, a lot of this is our opinions. Everybody has different experience, every, everybody has different experiences so everyone's going to have different opinions and there's not exactly a right or a wrong way it's going to be what works for you and what works in your growing environment so maybe you can get away with just a, a more uh, bark open air mix but that being said what i'm working with today is paniculatum crossed with punctatum and one of these is more of a terrestrial style species and so for that purpose i'm going to go with a more terrestrial mix I don't think these would fare too well being, uh, I absolutely wouldn't recommend mounting them by any means. Um, but even so, I wouldn't put them in an open bark mix without something added in there that's a little bit more moisture retentive. So let's go ahead uh, mix up the tree fern and the bark. I'm going to make a big mess here. That's okay because before the video started, I cleaned all the surfaces of our work area here down with disinfectant and you want to make sure that you're doing that. You want to make sure you keep your work area clean to reduce the chances of you know moving pathogens and disease around and that way if you spill a little bit of uh, media on your counter you can just pick it back up and keep working with it and you're not worrying about using yucky media that's you know now got fungal spores or, uh, or something like that in it. So just make sure your working environment is clean Make sure your bucket, I cleaned out the bucket with disinfectant before I started putting materials in here. So, and wash your hands too. You wanna be clean. You don't like being sick and your plants don't wanna be sick either. That makes this up real good. Maybe we should have done this before the video, but I wanted y'all to see it. And I just kinda eyeball it. Oop, it's kinda windy today. So, I'm sure a lot of this bark is still at the bottom. A bowl, a really big bowl would be a lot easier to mix, but I didn't have one, so we went with a bucket. So, I'll let y'all see that. This is looking a little bit more like what I want it to look like. Um, if I had some extra perlite, I'd probably put some perlite in there too, but I don't. Maybe a little bit more tree burn. And you can see I'm bad at estimating the amount of materials that I'm going to need. This is way more than what I'm going to need for these two little plants. That's okay. All these other little seedling certipodiums I'm sure are going to be needing to be repotted in the spring. So we can save it for that.
And like I said, this is a clean surface, so I'm not worried about taking the plant out and laying it on the counter because it's been disinfected. So don't lose your tag. You always want to keep your tag. So this is the first time I've actually looked at the roots on these plants. Uh, but there you go. There's uh, one year's growth. Let's see. I can't read the date on the tag, but that's um, a seedling that was potted into a two inch this um, probably about a year ago. And that's the amount of root growth. So a lot of these roots are still good. And like I said, it's still a little bit early in the season to be messing with plants. So I'm not gonna try and disturb these roots too much if I don't have to. And you also just wanna confirm that it's gonna fit in here nicely. It's actually not, not that's just about right. Uh, and you could have gone actually a little bit bigger of a pot with these if you wanted to. Because certipotums will, you know, they'll double in size. If you fertilize correctly, your next year's growth is going to be you know, closer to a foot tall. So, let's also, I want to mention this. I do add either peanuts or lava rock. I'm a big fan of lava rock. So I put lava rock in the bottom of my pots. And this is just red lava rock like you get at the garden center for, um, you know, for stone walkways or you know, decorative things. Works real well for plants. It's usually pretty good, uh, pretty clean. Probably just need a few. So not only will the lava rock, you know, help just add space, um, it'll help hold the pot down because you got a lot of dense material on the bottom of the pot so it doesn't fall over. Right. Now here's what we're going to do. The tree fern is still good. We're going to add our tree fern and bark mix and push it down. I'm being really careful um, to not damage this. This has not initiated new growth yet, but a lot of them have started to have the first little nubbins coming out of the base of the this year's growth. This one has not, but I'm still going to be trying be careful that I don't damage this. You can see this is last year's, well, the previous growth from when it was in its community pot. But that that is this year, or this year previous growth, and the new growth this year will come out from the base somewhere around here. So I'm being real careful not to damage it too much. But I also want to hold the plant center in the pot. And I say center but you want the older growth closer to the back if you can help it. That way you have more room in the direction that the plant is wanting to grow. Because if you put the plant too far this way, the new growth is gonna emerge right here at the edge of the pot and it's not gonna work out very nicely. So plant position matters. Another thing I should mention for anybody who's not used to repotting orchids is you want the level that it was previously planted at to be level with the new level or flush with the new level that you potted at. You do not want to bury it too high and you don't want to bring it up, uh, bury it too low or bring it up too high. You want it to be just about the same level that it was. And I do pack the media in here pretty good. Not so hard that I'm damaging all of those roots that were in the root ball especially since I'm not excavating the old media or trimming roots. So. Good shake helps, you know, everything fall into place so you don't end up with big air gaps down there. And that that's about done. That's about how I would like it. So theoretically this year you should have either one or two new growths here and they should probably end up about somewhere around that size. And we'll let you know how that works out. And don't forget the last thing is you want to put your tag back in at the edge of the pot. And make sure you get it in there good. The worst thing is to lose a tag and forget what it is. And that happens to all of us. The tag blows out, the plant falls over, um, and then you forget what it is. And so just do your best to make sure you put the tag back in there so you don't forget what it is.
All right, and since we got two of them, let's just go ahead and do this other one. All right, we're back. We're gonna do the second uh, certipodium. Since we're here, taking it out, there's our tag. We'll set it aside for now. There is your roots. Hope y'all can see that. Good roots. Media is still nice, not very decomposed, so we're gonna leave it be. You can see I added a couple pieces of red lava rock, or at least I hope you can see that in there. A couple pieces of red lava rock in the bottom of the pot. And just like before, I'm going to place it so that it's center, but also towards the back of the pot edge. Give it as much space as I can. I'm going to use my fingers to hold it in place while I do this, but being real careful not to hurt the plant. And then we're just going to add our media. We're going to try and make sure we don't leave any big air gaps. So remember this is just a semi-terrestrial sort of orchid. It's related to catacetums and cymbidiums and ancelias and all that good stuff. So they like a lot of water, so they do not need a whole bunch of air gaps in there like some more epiphytic species would. Again, we're being careful not to pot it too deep or too hot. I'm gonna press this guy in here. What I do not want is this plant to fall out if the wind blows it over and disturb the cycle of uh, this year's root growth. Cause then you'll just set the plant back. I had a steak um, from the nursery from being staked up when it was just recently potted. It's not necessary at this time because I've, I've packed it in there pretty good. But since it's in there, we're gonna go ahead and leave it. If it starts to get wiggly, we can tie it up to the stake and you know add some stability. But I think this is gonna be fine. You can always use a pot clip, uh, but pot clips on this small of a certipodium, uh, you're not gonna have very much area to put your pot clip. So a stake would probably be best if you're gonna use something to stabilize it in its pot. So that's about how I like it. You know, maybe get a couple shakes. Stick our tag back in there so we don't lose it. And if you want to make a new tag, I like to add new tags uh, where I wrote in uh, what I did and what the date was that I repotted it. Um, but we can we can do that at another time. So that's about it for the certipodiums. It is still the middle of dormancy. They won't be coming uh, awake for another month or so. So if you have to lightly water it in and then put it somewhere pretty bright again and dry it out because again, we are still in the dormancy season. We don't want to be giving this plant too much water or it's going to rot and it's not easy or it's not very hard to rot a certipodium if you keep it too wet during the dry season. So water it in lightly just so that the media, you know, falls into place and then just keep it dry until spring. Usually Valentine's Day is a good um, date to start watering or with catacetum types or certipodiums you want to make sure that the new growth is up and emerging and you've got roots already going down into the pot. Certipodiums are a little bit more forgiving than catacetums uh, but you should still err on the side of the caution on the side of caution and wait to water if you're in doubt. Uh, like I said we're going to leave these dry for a little while until uh, they start growing in the springtime and then we'll start doing our added fertilizer and water. Um, it would be a good idea for certipodiums to add some slow release, not too much, but a little bit of slow release into the top of the pot and then still continue with your water soluble fertilizer uh, weekly during the summer. Uh, these are heavy feeders. Um, you don't want to over fertilize them in the winter by any means, but during the summer and the growing season, they're heavy, heavy feeders. They like a lot of fertilizer and you know, they've only got from, you know, March or April till November to do their growing. So in that time, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're giving them good nutrition and good watering. But right now, we're still dry. If you wanna repot them, go ahead. But just keep in mind that you're, we're not growing yet, so don't start watering them yet. And thanks for watching, guys. Uh, like I said, we're gonna be doing some more repotting videos or tutorials when season approaches. It's still a little early, so we're still hesitant and holding off on doing a lot of repotting but you know thanks for the request if we're getting more requests that we can 
oblige y'all, uh, we'll, we'll try and do it. But thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.